Hello, and welcome to the East West Hollywood Brass Library. I'm David Earle, and I'm going to introduce you to the Hollywood Brass Section. I call it the Hollywood Brass Section because it's part of the Hollywood Orchestra. The Hollywood Orchestra is made up of Hollywood strings, Hollywood woodwinds, Hollywood brass, Hollywood percussion, and the solo instruments. What make these work together as an orchestra is that they're all recorded in the same space, using the same microphones, and they sound excellent together. Just like the string library and the woodwind library and the percussion library, this is no different in terms of it being a workhorse and a very powerful library that is also a Formula One race car of a library. To get this library to work really well, you want to run it on an SSD and a rockin' CPU. It'll pay you back big time if you give it really good hardware. We're going to be going over the Diamond series, which has some additional content and has the option to use 24-bit samples. The library was co-produced with Thomas Bergerson of Two Steps from Hell fame and engineered by Sean Murphy, who's won Academy Awards and worked on more A-list titles than I can even count. Doug Rogers and Nick Phoenix were the producers of this library, of course, and you'll hear it in the deep scripting, multiple velocity layers, and attention to detail. The quality of this library is unparalleled. 150 gigabytes of 24-bit 44.1K samples. I'm going to give you a proper introduction to this puppy. Let's have a look at it. What have we here? Well, this is a cue from a video game that I worked on recently, and this is a brass section from a very particular part of this cue. I'm using trumpets, French horn, solo horn, three trombones, and a bass trombone, and a tuba. The Hollywood series of instruments figure large in all of my productions. They have a really big cinematic sound, and I can't live without them. Literally. If I go up to the top of this piece, I have the actual orchestra that we recorded. Honestly, it doesn't really have the same flair as when we add in all of the elements. I'll add just the brass. It's a real testament to this library that even when I have the option to record an orchestra, which is rarefied air these days, I still want to have them in there. And that's very powerful. Let's check out this brass library and see what it has to offer. Let's have a look inside the browser. Inside the browser, you'll find different families of brass instruments. Two French horns, two trombones and one bass trombone, two trumpets, three trumpets, six French horns, a low brass section, and then solo instruments. Within those, you have folders of articulation types. We have long, short, effects, legato, mutes, and key switches. When you reach the low brass and the solo family, you'll see that some of those folders aren't necessary for these types of instruments. When we go inside of the articulations, such as long, you'll see that inside here we have the different articulations spelled out for us. In this case, we have a legato repetition. RR means round robin. Round robin is when you hit a key, the same key twice, you'll get a different sample for each key. When we get into short and effects, you can see that some of these have other nomenclature that's very important to understand. LEG generally means legato. We have slur, which means there's going to be a slide of pitch between one tone and the next tone. We have DB tongue. <laughs> that's double tonguing. So all of these articulations and articulation types are spelled out in the documentation. I highly recommend that you go in and check it out. When we go to the player, the player is laid out the same way in all of the Hollywood series. On the left-hand side, you have the system settings, such as MIDI port, channel, transpose, velocity settings, voice limiting, and bit depth. Below that are our performance options, round-robin reset, monophonic true legato, 
portamento, repetition, legato. Now these are slightly different in the brass than the string sections because the articulations behave differently. Below that we have a volume envelope. On the right hand side, you can mix these different microphone sections together. We have close mics, which are very close to the player, mid mics, which are out in the room a bit. We have the main mics, and then we have a switch here between a surround and a set of vintage mics. Inside the documentation, you'll find where those mics were placed, what types of mics were used, and how you might be able to use them. I highly recommend mixing between these microphone sections to give yourself a different emotion, a different sound, and a different type of clarity. Sometimes it's good to use the close mics when you have fast runs and things like that to get more definition to the articulations. Above that, we have a reverb. The reverb is going to be a convolution reverb with all kinds of impulse responses that you can choose from. Stereo doubling. This allows for a further width of the stereo image. On the right-hand side, we have our output settings. When you load a patch, you'll see these come to life. So on the left-hand side, you see all the port settings show up. There's our envelope. The envelope is set per instrument type. All of our articulations are down the center. On the right-hand side, we have our mixer. If you want to turn the mics on, you simply select these buttons down below, and that'll load the mic types. Up top, we can turn our reverb on, and we can choose between the different impulse responses just by going down this list. As you can see, it's a very extensive list with hundreds of different impulse responses. The right-hand side, we have our output settings. Now, the output set right now is uh, stereo, and at the bottom it says 1 and 2. You can set up play as a multi-timbral instrument that can have several different outputs on it. When you have the different outputs, inside your DAW, you'll need to create auxiliaries that receive those outputs. Down below on the keyboard, the white area is going to show the playable area of the instrument. The yellow area is not playable. It will make no sound. When you see blue, that means you have a key switch. Let's load a key switch and see what that looks like. Down below, we have a blue section. As we switch through these, the type of sound that we play will change. I recommend possibly having an external controller that's used just for the key switching. But you can also use, if you have a large keyboard, like an 88 key keyboard, you can also just go down to that range. It'll be in the playable area of the keyboard, and you can use that as well. Personally, I like to use a control surface that's separate from my keyboard for doing key switching. But that's up to you. Now, let's have a listen to what some of these sounds do and how you can use them. When playing in the Hollywood Brass Library, you want to make sure to make good friends with your mod wheel. As with any East-West Library, you really want to see what the mod wheel does first. In most of the Hollywood Libraries as well, you want to get familiar with the expression pedal or using an expression slider, which is controller 11. In this case, I've got a two French horn patch that I'm going to use mod wheel to give a little bit of extra expression out of the instrument. When finely tuned, this is a way that you can really make a brass section breathe. I wanted to show you the same example, but with six French horns instead. As you can hear, we have a larger section, which is really great for the big heroic stuff. In the libraries, you'll also find these patches that are called REP, R-E-P. That's for repeated lines. A lot of times with brass, you're going to be playing uh, a series of intervals over and over again very quickly. Something like this. And when you
you do that, the library has some scripting built in so that you don't hear the effect called machine gunning or a single sample is being played over and over again. It's going to be cycling between samples. And in the Hollywood library, there's actually additional scripts that are adjusting tuning and things like that slightly. So there's even less chance of our ears being offended by a machine gunning sample. In the libraries, I really like a lot of the effects that you can get out of the instruments. In this case, in the French horns, we have things like flutter tongue and crescendo and things called rips, which are very, very uh, handy in exciting action music and things like that. Here's an example of flutter tonguing. So it's a great effect. It can be used comedically or it can be used for really big dramatic scenes. I suggest going through all of the effects in all of the libraries. You'll find some hidden gems. One of the hidden gems I'm going to show you a little bit later actually comes in the sustain library. But there's a lot of things within this library that if you go digging deep, you'll find some really special patches. In the trumpets, I'm going to play you a true legato instrument. When you see this monophonic true legato switch is on, that means that you've selected something from the legato library that has the ability to use that script. The script is very deep. It basically is going to make very realistic transitions between notes as you play in a legato mode, and also will not allow you to play polyphonically with the same instrument. Listen to the effect that it gives. What's really great about this particular instrument is that we can do those big heroic We can repeat a note over and over again, and it doesn't sound bad because we have a repetition built into it, as we can see here in the name. The slur implies that it's going to make transitions between notes that sound very real. Sometimes in orchestral music, you want to run up to a note. You're going to give a big, that kind of thing. And a lot of instruments don't handle that very well. So let's hear what this run script sounds like. As you can hear, it's very smooth, there's transitions between the notes, and you can practically hear the fingering of the player as it, as it happens. So it speaks very quickly, and this particular script goes from note to note very efficiently. Here's another example of a legato instrument, a true monophonic legato. I wanted to show you the combination of the legato working with the mod wheel and also very wide intervals. The wider the interval, the more interesting the legato effect is. I mean, it's really capturing it beautifully. And that's a very hard line to sell when you're mocking up a score. Another thing that can be handy is these different uses of the mod wheel. When you see the mod wheel spelled out like this in giant capital letters, mod speed, that means that the mod wheel is no longer being used for expression necessarily. It's being used for, in this case, timing of crescendos. Crescendo one. Crescendo two. Crescendo three. So we're given three speeds of crescendo with only one patch. This is one of the solo instruments called the cymbasso. Now in this particular instrument, it's not made to be used in a legato form. But if you go into the player, there's actually a legato simulator. And what that'll do is change the instrument to monophonic. And it doesn't have the same types of samples that are used in the monophonic true legato. But what they've done is created a script that creates randomness in pitch, and creates its own sliding between notes to make it sound a little bit more realistic. Let me turn up the expression. So that's not true monophonic legato where they have that really deep superscripting going on, but it still sounds very good using the legato simulator, which doing things like tuning and, and randomization in different ways is giving you a legato feel. Before I show you one of the hidden gems of this library, the mariachi, I wanted to just tell you that you can go into your mixer here, and in your mixer, your mic positions are located here as well. Now, along with the close mid main mics, you have your surround mics and vintage mics. 
you can actually select between either the surround or the vintage. When I select effects, every single play instance that you have has the ability to use this SSL channel strip, convolution reverb, solid state logic, bus compression, it's SSL, Omicide, which is a multiband distortion, and an amp simulator. The amp simulator and Omicide aren't used as often in the uh, orchestral libraries, but they can be kind of fun. And lastly, I wanted to just play some of this mariachi. That's one of those hidden gems that's located inside the solo trumpets. Definitely dig into this library and see what gems it has for you. They're really pretty amazing. Before I leave and show you the demo of what this can really sound like when you put it to the test, I want to load up a controller that I have. This is called the Native Instruments Jam that I use with the Hollywood Instruments. And the reason that I use it is I have these touch strips that are assigned to specific MIDI values. These values are very common amongst the Hollywood series. We have controller 11, which is expression. Controller 70 in the strings is finger position. We have 15, which in Hollywood strings is going to be con sordina or with mute. Then when we get to 5, 65, and all the way over here to uh, 69, these are going to be very common amongst all the libraries. Controller 5 is portamento time. Controller 65 is portamento on and off. 68 is going to be legato on and off. 69 is repetition on and off. And then 14, if you're in Hollywood strings, is going to be up bow and down bow selection. Up top on this controller, I have notes, MIDI notes, C0 through D sharp one, and then I have C negative one through A negative one. This is for key switching. Now, like I said, if you have an 88 key keyboard, you might not have to worry about this. But if you don't, I use a 61 key keyboard when I'm writing at home. It's very handy to have this set up separately, but that's just a suggestion. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey through the Hollywood Brass, and I wanted to play a little demo of what this library can really do, and I'll see you next time. Take good care. Ciao.